question. We're going to jump in here because the president has started speaking. Thank you, David. Let's listen in here. And I want to start by acknowledging how tired, worried, and frustrated I know you are. I know how you're feeling. For many of you, this will be the first or even the second Christmas where you look across the table, be an empty kitchen chair there. Tens of millions have gotten sick. We've all experienced upheaval in our lives. But while COVID has been a tough adversary, we've shown that we're tougher. Tougher because we have the power of science and vaccines that prevent illness and save lives. And tougher because of our resolve so that, let me answer some questions that lay uh, out the steps the Vice President and I are taking to prepare for the rising number of cases experts tell us we can expect in the weeks ahead. First, how concerned should you be about Omicron, which is now the dominant variant in this country and it happened so quickly? The answer is straightforward. If you're not fully vaccinated, you have good reason to be concerned. You're at a high risk of getting sick. And if you get sick, you're likely to spread it to others, including friends and family. <clears throat> and the unvaccinated have a significantly higher risk of ending up in a hospital <clears throat> or even dying. Almost everyone who has died from COVID-19 in the past many months has been unvaccinated. Unvaccinated. But if you're, on, if you're among the majority of Americans who are fully vaccinated, and especially if you've gotten the booster shot, that third shot, you're much, you have much, much less reason to worry. You have a high degree of protection against severe illness. But because Omicron spreads so easily, we'll see some fully vaccinated people get COVID, potentially in large numbers. There'll be positive cases in every office, even here in the White House, among the, unva among the vaccinated, among the vaccinated from, from Omicron. But these cases are highly unlikely to lead to serious illness. Vaccinated people who get COVID may get ill, but they're protected from severe illness and death. That's why you should still remain vigilant. <clears throat> According to our doctors, even if you're fully vaccinated, you should wear a mask when indoors and in public settings. Wearing a mask provides extra protection for you and those around you. And I know some Americans are wondering if you can safely celebrate the holidays with your family and friends. The answer is yes, you can if you and those you celebrate with are vaccinated, particularly if you've gotten your booster shot. If you are vaccinated and follow the precautions that we all know well, you should feel comfortable celebrating Christmas and the holidays as you planned it. You know, you've done the right thing because you enjoy the holiday season. And thanks to the progress on vaccinations this fall, we've gone from nearly 90 million adults in July who had not even started their vaccination process to fewer than 40 million today. <clears throat> Still too many, but down from 90 to 40. All these people who have not been vaccinated, you have an obligation to yourselves, to your family, and quite frankly, I know I get criticized for this, to your country. Get vaccinated now, it's free, it's convenient. I promise you, it saves lives. And I honest to God believe it's your patriotic duty. Another question, folks are asking is, what can you do to make yourself and your family feel safer and be safer? The answer is simple. Get your booster shot. Wear a mask. Our doctors have made it clear. Booster shots provide the strongest of protections. Unfortunately, we still have tens of millions of people who are eligible for the booster shot but have not yet gotten it. They've gotten the first two shots, but they've not gotten the booster. Folks, the booster shots are free and widely available. Over 60 million Americans, <clears throat> including 62% of eligible seniors, our most vulnerable group, have gotten their booster shots. I got my booster shot as soon as they were available. And just the other day, former President Trump announced he had gotten his booster shot. Maybe one of the few things he and I agree on. People with booster shots are highly protected. Join them. Join us. It's been six months or more since my second shot. If it's been six months or more for your second shot when I got my booster, you can get yours today. If you've been six months or more since your second shot. Another question that folks are asking is, are we going back to March 2020? Not just last March 2021, but March 2020, when the pandemic first hit. <clears throat> That's what I keep getting asked. The answer is absolutely no, no. There are three big differences between then and now. 
One, number one, first one, more than 200 million Americans have been fully vaccinated. In March 2020, no one was fully vaccinated. What that means is today, as cases, a case of COVID-19 for fully vaccinated and boosted person will most likely mean no symptoms or mild ones similar to the common respiratory viruses. <clears throat> Over 200 million Americans should have the peace of mind that they did not have in March of 2020. They're protected from hospitalization and they're protected from death. Second point, we're prepared today for what's coming. In March of 2020, we were not ready. Today, we stockpiled enough, we stockpiled enough gowns, masks, and ventilators to deal with the surge of hospitalizations among the unvaccinated. Today, we're ready. And as I'll explain in a few minutes, we're going to be reinforcing our hospitals, helping them. Number three, we know a lot more today than we did back in March of 2020. For example, last year, we thought the only way to keep your children safe was to close, your, close our schools. Today, we know more and we have more resources to keep those schools open. We, you can get five to 11-year-olds vaccinated, a <clears throat> tool we didn't have until last month. Today, we don't have to shut down schools because of a case of COVID-19. Now, if a student tests positive, other students can take the test and stay in the classroom if they're not infected, rather than closing the whole school or having to quarantine. We can keep our K-12 through schools open. That's exactly what we should be doing. So, folks, let me summarize. We should all be concerned about Omicron, but not panicked. If you're fully vaccinated, and especially if you got your booster shot, you are highly protected. And if you're unvaccinated, you're at a higher risk of getting severely ill from COVID-19, getting hospitalized, and even dying. So the best thing to do is get fully vaccinated and get your booster shot. And no, this is not March of 2020. 200 million people are fully vaccinated. We're prepared. We know more. We just have to stay focused. So that's where we stand. Now, let me tell you about the additional steps I'm ordering today <clears throat> to take on what is coming. I know you've heard a lot of this in the news already this morning. Three weeks ago, I laid out a COVID-19 action plan for this winter that prepared us for this moment. Today, we're making the plan even stronger. First, we're setting up our vaccination and booster efforts. We're stepping it up significantly. In the past two weeks, we've seen the highest vaccination rates since last spring. And we aren't as vaccinated as a country as we should be. Though. That's why we have added 10,000 new vaccination sites on top of the 80,000 sites that are already we, had, we already had in place. And even more will open in January. I know there's some parts of this country where people are very eager to get their booster, where it's harder to get an appointment, excuse me. <coughs> So starting this week, I'll be deploying hundreds more vaccinators and more sites to help get the booster shots in people's arms. I've ordered FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, to stand up new pop-up vaccination clinics all across the country where you can get that booster shot. We've opened, <coughs> excuse me, we've opened FEMA vaccination sites in Washington State and New Mexico recently as cases have increased. And today, I'm directing FEMA to stand up new sites in areas where there is a high demand. These steps are going to help us add more, more and more booster appointments and over the, just over the next few weeks. I also want to say a word to parents. If your children are not vaccinated, please get them vaccinated. If you're a parent, understandably, who waited to see how the first shots went with other kids before getting your own kid vaccinated, you can stop waiting. Six million children in our country, ages 5 to 11, are vaccinated. Get your children protected today, now. For those parents out there who have a child that's too young to be vaccinated, that is under the age of five, I know this can still be a scary time. But one thing, one thing you can and must do, while we await vaccines for children under five, get yourself fully vaccinated and boosted as well as those around you, your children, your caregivers, your siblings. It's critical to mask up in public indoor places. 
We know that our youngest children have only rarely been impacted by serious COVID case, uh, COVID-19 cases, but they can be further protected if they're surrounded by vaccinated people. And again, to folks who are not vaccinated, you may think you're putting only yourself at risk, but it's your choice. Your choice is not just a choice about you. It affects other people. You're putting other people at risk. Your loved ones, your friends, neighbors, strangers you run into. And your choice can be the difference between life or death. The longer the virus is around, the more likely variants form that may be deadlier than the ones that have come before. Let me say again and again and again and again, please get vaccinated. It's the only responsible thing to do. Those who are not vaccinated are causing hospitals to overrun, become overrun again. I just spoke to the governor of New York. Every COVID-19 hospital means someone with a heart attack, cancer, or other serious illness may not get that bed and that life-saving care they need in the hospital. Look, let me give it to you straight again. Omicron is serious, potentially deadly business for unvaccinated people. Let me be clear. Thanks to the prior administration and our scientific community, America is one of the first countries to get the vaccine. And thanks to my administration and the hard work of Americans, we led a rollout and made America among the world leaders in getting shots in arms. But uptake slowed this summer as vaccine resistance among some hardened. Look, the unvaccinated are responsible for their own choices. But those choices have been fueled by dangerous misinformation on cable TV and social media. You know, these companies and personalities are making money by peddling lies and allowing misinformation that can kill their own customers and their own supporters. It's wrong. It's immoral. And I call on the purveyors of these lies and misinformation to stop it. Stop it now. One of the other things that we know that has to be done is more testing. Because Omicron spreads easily, especially among the unvaccinated, it's critically important that we know who's infected. That means we need more testing. And on that score, we're now where we should be. Yes, we have over 20,000 free testing sites. Yes, we've used the Defense Production Act and spent $3 billion to greatly expand the number of at-home tests available for purchase online and at your local pharmacy. And yes, we made sure insurance covers the PCR tests you get in the hospital or at your doctor's office. But starting next month, Private insurance will also cover, also cover at-home testing, so you can order a test online and get reimbursed. We're providing access to free at-home tests for those who may have insurance as well, may not have insurance, I should say, as well. But it's not enough. We have to do more. We have to do better. And we will. Starting this week, the federal government will set up emergency testing sites in areas that need additional testing capacity. Before Christmas, the first several of these federal testing sites will be up and running in New York City, with many more to come. This free testing is going to help reduce the waiting lines, the time you have to stand there, and sometimes it's an hour or more. We're going to continue to add federal testing sites where needed, so that if you want an immediate test, there'll be a place where you can go get it. We also need to do better with at-home testing. So I'm announcing today, the federal government will purchase one half billion, that's not million, billion with a B, additional at-home rapid tests with delivery starting in January. We'll be getting these tests to Americans for free. And we'll have websites where you can get them delivered to your home. We've arranged for it to be easier for you to find a free COVID testing site near you on Google. Just enter COVID tests near me the Google search bar, and you can find a number of different locations nearby where you can get tested. And we're going to continue to use the Defense Production Act, as we did earlier this month, to make sure we're producing as many tests and as quickly as possible. The bottom line is it's a lot better than it was, but we're taking even more steps to make it easier to get tested and get tested for free. Next, we're preparing hospitals for what's coming. Those 40 unvaccinated adults, 
have a good chance of getting COVID-19. And some of you will get very sick. Not only in hospitals are going to get extremely stressed, extremely stressed again, both in terms of equipment, as well as personnel to care for those who get sick. That's why my administration has stockpiled and prepositioned millions of gowns and gloves, masks and ventilators, we call it PPP. We're ready to send them immediately to any state that needs more. In addition, I've directed the Pentagon to mobilize an additional 1,000 troops to be deployed to help staff local hospitals and expand capacity. That's 1,000 military doctors, nurses, and medics. We've already started moving military, excuse me, medical teams. They've already landed in Wisconsin, Indiana this week. This is on top of 300 federal medical, medical personnel that are now on the ground, having deployed since we learned about Omicron. Look, while we know staffing is the biggest need for hospitals, some may need more beds as well. We're prepared. I've directed FEMA to activate the National Response Center and begin deploying teams now to provide additional hospital beds. We'll begin to construct emergency capacities near hospitals and parking garages and nearby buildings to be ready if needed. And the federal, the federal government is paying for all of this, period, all of it. Further, FEMA will deploy hundreds of ambulances and EMS crews so that if one hospital fills up, we can transport patients to beds elsewhere. This week, we'll send dozens of ambulances to New York and Maine because, of, because the COVID is spreading very rapidly to help transport patients. Our doctors, nurses, hospital staffs have gone above and beyond during this pandemic. The strain and stress is real. I really mean it. It's real. And we'll have their backs, though. We have to let them know we have their backs. Finally, we're making sure that COVID-19 no longer closes businesses or schools. Last week, the federal court reinstated my administration's vaccination or test. The vaccination or test rule for businesses with more than 100 employees. The rule requires employers with 100 or more employees to protect their workers who are on site and indoors with the requirement that they be vaccinated or tested each week or go home. These rules are going to keep workers safe, and keep workers safe will help keep businesses open. When people are vaccinated or tested, they are much less likely to get sick and less likely to spread it to others. Customers are more likely to come in and shop because they know it's a safe environment. I know vaccination requirements are not popular for many. They're not even popular for those who are anxious to get them. My administration has put them in place not to control your life, but to save your life and the lives of others. Where 400,000 Americans died from COVID this calendar year, and almost all were unvaccinated, almost all were preventable. The rule is legal and effective. It's going to save thousands of American lives. We must also keep our K-12 schools open. Look, the science is clear and overwhelming. We know how to keep our kids safe from COVID-19 in school. K-12 through schools should be open. And that safety is increased if schools require all adults who work in the schools to get vaccinated and take the safety measure that the CDC is recommending, including masking. I got Congress to pass billions of dollars in All right, so listening to a press conference by President Joe Biden with another strong message about getting vaccinated, getting booster shots, getting tested. Uh, message to all Americans. Unlike Canada, though, the United States not bringing in many new restrictions in terms of day-to-day -day life and society. The president deciding not to go there, instead focusing on vaccinations and further testing. All right,